Chapter 32 No Time for Healing The Tenth Light Day of Elimbu, 819 I sit up and listen for clues to where I am, other than a small, dimly lit thatch hut. I can recall the bitter taste of the sleeping draught, but it is gone now. There are two other men and four empty pallets here. Both men are out cold and have grievous cuts all over. The fire is down to its last embers. I have no recollection of arriving here. It's becoming a disturbing habit. A reed thin man throws back the leather opening and blinds me with the brilliance of Belenos's evening rays. He stirs the embers and adds a couple of logs. I sit up a little more to catch his attention. He turns to me and gives a genuine smile. It's good to see you awake, finally. Thank you. It's good to be awake. Can you tell me where this place is? You are in the healing house of Tokar Briwa. Tokar Briwa? A feeling of dread falls over me. Drustan is the Lord Protector of this place and one of Loris's closest allies. Yes, you are safe. No doubt you have been out searching for this Grammy for too long. You are not the first to have trouble transforming back to human. How did you know I was a druid if I was in bird form? A kestrel that passes on several volbates and then suddenly pounces on a third. I know how to spot a druid who is losing himself to the animal. A kestrel? What is the last thing I remember? You managed to elude my net the first time, but not the second. I must say, as a bird, you have an angry disposition. He shows me his hands filled with long scrapes and bruises. Is that all from me? I ask, horrified. He waves me off. If I couldn't handle a peevish bird, then I have no business being a druid. Now, I'm going to get you some food, so try to stay awake until I get back. After your meal, you can sleep to your heart's content. I feel safe for the first time in a month. I will try to stay awake. I say, with mock seriousness. Good. I will take my dinner with you. The man returns with two bowls of porridge and a loaf of bread. He hands me a bowl and then breaks the bread in half. We both notice my hand trembling as I reach for it. We lock eyes before I break away. I know what you're going to say. Do you? You're going to tell me that I've pushed myself to the very edge of my powers and that I need to refrain from using them for the next month. My question, then, is how many times have you heard and not heeded this advice? There is talk of a druid who not so many days ago became a puffin and could not change back. Why anyone would choose that ridiculous animal is the question I would like to have answered. He throws a couple more logs on the fire. I cast my gaze downward at my bread and take a bite. My stomach reawakens. I finish the bread and the porridge like a half-starved man. The healer offers me his meal. No, no, I can't take that. I am sorry, even the crudest churl would fault me for that. My arm is getting tired, so please, take this bowl. I can always get more for myself. We trade bowls, and I force myself to talk while eating my second helping. I am doubly sorry for... I have not bothered to ask your name, nor I yours, so don't go turning awkward. We are brothers of the land, after all. I am Andrilu, and I am the healer for Drewston's camp. A shiver goes down my spine. I had been trying very hard to convince myself that I had heard wrong. And where are all of Drewston's men? I ask, in a conversational way, I hope. Andrelou laughs an amused, non-threatening laugh. Do you expect me to tell you the spots my campmates have chosen to find this wayward Grammy? They want the promised reward from Loris as much as you do. I give a relieved smile. My pardons. I meant to ask if the whole camp was out searching for this errant brother. Errant? It's more than that, I'm afraid. You must have been in kestrel form for a very long time. Drewston revealed to us last night that this Grammy is a messenger from Boswin, 
and they are scheming with other druids to ferment a revolt. It was stressed to us over and over that we are not to kill him before the disloyal members of the Nine are uncovered. Members of the Nine? Indeed. Which ones? I am not in the habit of questioning my lord. Is that common in your group? Lord Simbel allows for some questions, but we know well who is in charge. I am called Arthmael. My apologies for not offering my name before. Andrelou waves my apology away. It's a shame we are on different sides. After this Grammy is captured and his information revealed, Drewston anticipates a move against Boswin. It is a sad day when Druid must fight Druid. Indeed. Now it is time for you to rest. I can share some good news, however. It seems that Master Gwalather has left Boswin's land. He is to join us here, and his aid will be most welcome. Master Gwalather, he's coming here. He mistakes my anxiety for excitement. I will have him look after you when he arrives, of course, but I assure you I have been more than adequate to the task. You have my most humble apology. I was simply shocked to hear Gwalather's name. Do you know when he will arrive? Soon, I would imagine. But then this whole ugly affair will be over soon. Gwalather promised to be with us by sound, so he can't be too long now. He rises and takes the second bowl from me. I would love to stay longer, but I must help with the fire ceremony set up. Fire ceremony? What day is it? Andrelou whistles. You have been in bird form for much too long. At dusk we start the second fire ceremony leading up to Saun. Saun is only two days away. Two and a bit. Dusk is not quite here, he says, amused at my reaction. You will remain here for it, no doubt. There will be no more transforming for you for a very long time. He shakes his head. Alas, I fear you will not be the one to discover this, Grammy. I lay my head back down on the pillow, as if the news has hit me hard. I'm so close. I'm sorry to dash your hopes. I will leave you be. I give Andrelou time to move on to other tasks. I can't risk Gwalitha seeing me. My shaky knees manage to hold me up, though I have to brace one hand against the wall to steady myself. My pack is under the bed. I curse my luck for having to get down to my knees only to rise one more time. I wait for the lightheadedness to go away before I check for the orchid. It's in sad shape, almost as bad as me, but there is nothing to be done for it. I edge toward the door and listen for movement. The other two men still sleep like the dead. All is quiet. I peek out of the leather flap and still see no one. To move cautiously is to draw suspicion, so I throw the leather flap to the side and stride out confidently. The biting cold wind hits me at once. It's good to be back on the moors. Arthmael, where are you going? Just my luck. Andrelou is directly across from me. I blink a couple times, as if the light is bothersome. I need some sort of excuse. I am going to relieve myself, but my knees are being disagreeable. I say. It's partially true. Here, take my staff. He rushes over to me, as if he's going to have to catch me from falling over. I should have thought of that. Do you want me to guide you there? No, thank you. I don't want to keep you from your other responsibilities. Go to the left of the camp, toward those two oaks. You'll be able to find it from there. Andrelou holds his nose to underscore the point. And if I have the strength, I would like to see the Tokar steps, since I have never been here before. Can you point out that direction as well? This is why I find the current latrine location so vexing. Continue on past the latrines and down the hill. Follow the river Barl for a short while, then they will be to your right. But you must wait another day or two before attempting it. I know that your knees at least agree with me. I smile and nod. Slowly turning toward the latrines, I resist the urge to hurry on my way. I note the camp is still empty, which means there are scores of druids out looking for me. 
somehow I must obtain commoner's clothing for my walk to Dartmoor. We are meant to serve the people, not steal from them. Must I break another tenet of our order to become a druid? I hurry on my way, disgusted with myself. Andrelou's finely hewn staff will be a dead giveaway that I'm a druid. Still, I doubt I could walk down the hill without it. I trace the lightly engraved knotwork design as my hand slides down the well-oiled staff. It is unfortunate that art such as this must be discarded. The River Barl is a sedate little river, and the need for a bridge is debatable. But when the bridge was laid down by the giants, few are willing to criticise. Huge flat rocks rest upon equally sized upright stones. The river is wide if not deep, and seventeen massive rocks are needed to span it. It seems obscene to scuttle across this great edifice, but my situation is dire. Midway across, I decide that I must stay in the good graces of the gods at least. I throw Andrelou's staff into the river and watch it catch between two stone columns. Let this be my meagre offering to the gods. Poor Andrelou, I have lied to him, and now I use his staff to curry favour from the gods. The man deserves better. But then, everyone else who has helped me has fared much worse. No tree falls upon me when I cross the bridge. I take this as a sign that the gods, at least, are not seeking vengeance. Dusk is upon me. I collect leaves and find a spot protected from the late autumn wind. One way or another, my quest is nearly over. <laughs>